there's actual science behind time travel that I've been looking into that you can actually go into the future, go into the past. So, so I can set the clock and go back and forth? No, and... no, no, no. You're thinking of time in the whole wrong way. You're, you're thinking of it like, like a clock on the wall. Oh, yeah. now, now, it is that, but it's also more than that. Uh, time can kind of be like a place. Oh, like here, like this space. Yeah, like like a place like here, or like Japan, or like <laughs> Paris, Paris, or any oui, oui. <laughs> place on a map, you can go to a place on the map, right? Uh -huh. You can also go to a place in time. Huh. But you gotta understand what is time mm -hmm. and what is space. Well, space is where we live. There's a space, a building in fact, that was designed to look like it's broken apart by gravity. We live in a world that's all around us, and what we say is that every different location in the world is a different point in space. Believe it or not, every space in space is connected. There's three different directions. We can go up or down, left or right, forwards or backwards, and then we've used them all up. There's no other directions we can go. All the other directions are some combination of those. But then we also have time. Time is another direction that we can move in. We move forward in time, one day per day. One day per day. One, day per day. one crazy haired guy you may have read about in school came up with the idea that all those points are connected to each other. Not only that, those points are actually connected to the points on the timeline as well. So get this, it's not just one thing, space, and another thing, time. There's no separation between the two. Space and time live together as one hunk of stuff. It's called, what else? Space time. One fan of Einstein is Dr. Sean. Sean Carroll. Sean Carroll. C-A-R-R-O-L-L. He works at Caltech. We met him in that crazy looking building. It's the astrophysics building where they study Einstein, space, time, and that one thing that links it all together gravity. Well, this was Einstein's great idea. Everyone knew before Einstein about gravity, about the fact that if you have an apple and you drop it, it falls toward the Earth, because the Earth is pulling on the apple with the force due to gravity. It's the same thing that keeps the Earth orbiting around the Sun. The Sun has a gravitational field that is pulling on the Earth. What Einstein realized that previous people had not is that the right way to think about gravity is as the curvature of space and time itself. So now that you know what space time is, let's try to visualize it. If you could see it, it's curvy, it's stretchy, bouncy, just like a trampoline. Every time I bounce down on the trampoline, it bends out of shape. Now scientists and sci-fi geeks around the world call this a warp. The trampoline warps out of shape because my body has mass. Woo! <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to do that. It also takes a lot of power in space. The sun has a lot of mass and it pushes against the net of space time, creating a giant warp. Now that is why the earth goes around the sun. The earth is creating its own warp, caught up in the warp of the sun and they can't seem to stop swinging around each other. What we feel is the force of gravity is our response to the curvature of space and time around. Now this all makes time travel possible. Stick with me, it gets a little weird. Now, here's a 100 year timeline for you, 1909 to 2009. Now normally if you were to make that journey, it would take a century to get between those two points. But if you were to take that 1909 point and stretch it, we know that space time is stretchy, all the way over to here, you have two points right next to each other connected by a tunnel. Now that tunnel has a name, it's called a wormhole. Wormholes are basically like tunnels through space, but they're shortcut tunnels. If you had a wormhole, it would be like you went in one side of the tunnel in Los Angeles, and you came out five minutes later in New York City, just moving at 50 miles an hour. It's basically a way to get from one place in space to another place in space by traveling through a much shorter distance. This is something that couldn't have happened if it weren't for the fact that space and time are curved, like Einstein taught us. They can be curved in interesting ways, and a wormhole is an example of an interesting way that space-time can be curved. The 4th of July, 1776 is another date you probably heard about in school. It's a fixed point in your history book, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. That exact point is where the United States began. To get back to that date, you need an old map of Philadelphia and a time machine. So if we could have a wormhole, which is a big if, we're not sure if they exist, and we moved it around in the right way, we might be able to actually use a wormhole as a time machine 
to go back and visit the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Now normally moving through time is like walking down a giant hallway. Past Monday, then you walk a little bit more, you get to Tuesday, you walk a little bit more, you get to Wednesday. If you had a wormhole, you could skip inside Wednesday and then immediately be at the weekend on Friday. Oh, I forgot something at the beginning of the week. So I can walk out on Tuesday, go into Wednesday, skip forward to Thursday, and then walk ahead to Friday and the weekend. You can move effortlessly through time, through wormholes, if they exist. And if wormholes exist, can you use them to travel backwards in time is another good question. We don't know the answer. There have been speculations, there have been hypotheses about how you might manipulate a wormhole to go backwards in time, but it's an open question. Right now, the best we can say is that we just don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, it's my a head lot, is it's spinning a lot. right know, now from that. Yeah, okay, yeah. let me see if okay. I got my hands around okay, this. Okay, go ahead. Wormholes, the conduit yeah, uh -huh, for, uh -huh. for time travel. Yeah. They're kind of like subways, right? You travel in <laughs> yeah, space yeah, and time. Yeah, that's a great example. That's a great example. So. Let me think about this. If you go in one spot on the subway in a station, uh -huh. you go under a tunnel, yeah. and then you come out another subway station. There are two different points in space-time. But Very the subway good. hasn't been built yet. No, nobody's built right. the subway, so no time travel right but, uh, Yes, time travel. <laughs> I just told you. No, no, I say time travel can't. You can go back in time, and in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how. All right. Take, name, 